Welcome back. Um, so we are going to continue. We're going to progress our lecture to our next topic, which is looking at heat and mass transfer problems with more than one independent variables. And this would cover two major topics. One would be the non-steady state transfer problem. So uh, the time dependent term is now not zero. So you have both dependence on position and time. That makes you having more than one independent variable. And the other case would be looking at boundary layer uh, problems, where uh, even under steady state, it becomes a two-dimensional problem. It becomes a dimensional problem in the flow direction along the surface of an object and also looking at the directions perpendicular to the object. So it becomes more than one independent variable. Uh, today, we are going to start looking at the first topic, which is looking at unsteady state uh, problems. And in this case, we're just going to use a example of unsteady state evaporation of a liquid. And this is also called the Arnold problem. If you look at the left hand side figure, here we have a cylindrical tube that you know, hypothetically, we can make it infinitely long. Um, and z equals zero, that is the interface between the liquid A and the gas B. Uh, before we, you know, you know, uh, proceed with our analysis, again, we always start with some reasonable assumptions. So the first assumption here would be, first, A and B uh, form ideal gas, ideal gas mixture. So what that means is that the molar density C is a constant, is constant. And also, the diffusivity of A and B or B and A is also constant. The second assumption it would be, let's say, the gas B is insoluble. Is insoluble in liquid A. And that means this assumption also is quite important because with this assumption, that actually says that B is almost stagnant because there is no driving force for it to move. Okay, and the last one is also simple, is that let's assume that there is no R dependence on the velocity. So no R dependence on velocity. So let's kind of define our coordinates again. So we have Z and R direction. Okay, so again, um, whenever we meet, you know, since we have already introduced the uh, section for equations of changes, or equations of change, we Typically, we'll start from that, analyzing our problems from now on. So first, if you look at the equation of continuity, equation of continuity, we have the gradient of the molar velocity of the whole system is going to be zero. Okay, so that means what? That means uh, this is only a one dimensional problem. So that also means that partial V star, partial Z equals to zero. Okay, and the reason we can write that here because 
we already assumed that the density would be constant because it's ideal gas. And there's no VR or V theta component of the velocity. Okay. So we have partial rho, partial t equals to the negative gradient of rho v, right? But rho is constant, so we can take rho out. So if we um, if we integrate, so sorry, maybe I should you know rewind this a little bit. So we should say it this way. My apologies. Uh, we should say it this way. We should say. Um, Partial row, partial t equals to the negative gradient of rho v, and because rho is constant, and we only have vz components, so we can conclude that partial rho, partial t equals to the uh, negative rho partial v star partial z okay so but because you know the density is a constant here right density is a constant here because it's ideal gas so your left hand side would be zero so that gives us to our final conclusion that partial v star partial z equals zero Okay, and if we integrate this equation, let's integrate that, we get V Z star equals to some constant. So that's the independent of Z, right? So we say V Z naught star of T. Here, this knot here means evaluated at z equals to zero. Okay, so if we further analyze this problem, we know that the total molar velocity equals to what well, equals to 1 over c times can't write times the combined molar flux of a plus the combined molar flux of b okay but we know that the molar flux of B would be zero at the interface or the gas loop interface because the B is insoluble in A. Okay, so finally we have V Z star equals to 1 over C N A Z naught which equals to what? Which equals to negative diffusion coefficient over 1 minus X A naught times partial X A partial Z at Z equals to 0. Okay, so um, here the x a naught is the interfacial gas phase concentration Okay, and we are assuming interfacial equilibrium Assume interfacial equilibrium. 
So the first part of the problem is using the equation of continuity. We have come up to and uh, <coughs> excuse me constructed the relation between the uh, the total molar velocity and its relation with the diffusion of species A here. Okay. And remember that it would be the key here to remember is that. Uh, the velocity it would actually be a function of time, okay? So with this in mind, we can now look at the equation of a continuity of A because our objective here is to look at the concentration pro So basically our target at the end is to figure out the relation of concentration uh, or, you know, the concentration as a function of both position and time. Okay, and uh, we're looking at only one dimensional diffusion or mass transfer problem. So that would be T and Z. Okay, so uh, to figure out the concentration distribution, we must go to the equation of continuity of A. So let's proceed with that. So equation of continuity of A. So we have, uh, if we just write down the governing equation, we have C times the substantial derivative of A, the molar fraction of A with respect to time, equals the negative gradient of the uh, diffusional flux plus reaction. In this case, there would be no reaction, so this term is zero. Okay, so um, if we proceed, now we have, uh, just looking at the substantial derivative, we have the substantial derivative xA over t now equals to partial xA partial t plus V star times the gradient of XA. So this is where V star comes into play, right here. Okay, so that equals to, that equals to partial XA partial T plus VC star partial XA partial z. Okay? And if we look at the right hand side here, that would equal to what? That would equal to the negative partial rho partial z times the negative diffusivity times the partial xa partial z. So I think, no, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so let's kind of, you know, rearrange these. We'll go, we're going to put this information down here. So now what we get on the left-hand side would be partial XA, partial T, plus the negative diffusion coefficient over 1 minus x a naught times partial x a partial z square equals to equals to the diffusion coefficient times partial square x a partial z square Or you know, let's kind of be more, be more accurate here. So this is going to be partial x a partial z at z equals to zero times partial x a partial z equals to 
the fusion coefficient partial square x a partial z square okay so you can see if we take a look, you know a quick look at our final equation here we see that it is different from fixed second law right because the fixed second law doesn't have the second term on the left hand side okay now let's take a look at the boundary conditions so real quick and this should be straightforward so boundary conditions we have at z equals to zero x a equals to x a naught and z equals to infinite x a should equal to zero and at initial conditions so initial condition would be at t equals to zero x a also equals to zero okay so the question now we have our governing equation and we have our boundary conditions and initial condition how do we approach this problem we have a partial differential equation right we have both time and position dependence and so how should we proceed so the question is how should we approach this problem well so the fact that you see what one of our boundary is at semi-infinite right so with semi-infinite conditions we typically would uh, refer to or go to a technique called a uh, combination of variables so the first part would be you know this implies combination of variables okay so we write that down here so combination of variables combination of variables so we have uh, we're gonna let a capital Z equal to the lowercase z over 4 times the diffusion coefficient times the time. That's the first step. The second step, we want to also define the rest to dimensionless variables. Okay. Since x a depends on x a not. So we will let the dimensionless x equals to x a over x a naught. Okay, so you can see now if you substitute these variables into our initial equation, which you're encouraged to do that as a practice, the equation becomes the following. The equation becomes the uh, from a partial differential equation to an ordinary differential equation. So d square x dz square now equals plus 
2 times z minus uh, phi, which we'll define that later, dx dz equals to 0. Okay, here phi is a function of x naught and equals to negative 1 over 2 xa over 1 minus xa naught times dx dz at z equals 0. <coughs> and this is the term, a, this is a dimensionless molar average velocity so rho is basically vz star times t over diffusion coefficient Okay, and by defining the dimensionless variables, we also need to transform our boundary conditions. So the next part is transformation of boundary conditions and initial condition. So we see that the boundary condition one is becoming at the capital Z equals to zero X the capital X now equals to one and for boundary condition two and initial condition becomes combined is at the capital X equals to infinite, so that accounts for T equals zero or Z equals infinite, capital X equals to zero. Okay, so by combination of variables, we successfully changed a problem for from an initial value problem to a boundary value problem. Okay, so we can try to solve it for now. So solve. So first, we will let dx dz equals to some r. So we change the problem from a second order problem to a first order problem. So that means dr dz e plus 2 times z minus phi times r equals to 0. So we have, you know, just, you know, rearrange things. dr dz equals to negative 2 times z minus phi dz. This is r. Integrate both sides, we get natural log of r equals to negative z minus phi square plus c1 so or gamma here actually but doesn't matter I guess equals to c1 times exponential negative z minus phi square and this is by definition the first derivative of x over z. So the second step is straightforward. We will integrate again. Integrate again. So we get x equals to c1 times the uh, integration of the exponential term here negative z minus rho 
squared dz. plus second constant. Uh, we have boundary conditions. So we know x of 0 equals to 1. So that tells us what? That tells us that c2 equals to 1. And we have x of infinite equals to 0. So c1 equals to negative 1 over the summation of 1 to infinite exponential negative z minus phi square dz. So finally, we have the solution. We have x, the dimensionless mass fraction of a equals to 1 minus this long list of integration z exponential negative z bar minus phi square dz bar 0 to infinite exponential negative z bar minus phi square the z bar. Okay, so this is basically an error function, right? So this is an error function. So uh, we have the following. We have x now equals to 1 minus uh, and some properties of the error function, let's put it down. So since the negative error function of some function equals to, and also the error function to infinite would equal to one. So we now have x equals to one minus the error function of z minus phi plus error function of phi and error function of infinite plus error function of phi. So that equals to 1 minus error function of z minus phi over 1 plus error function. And finally, we will substitute that into phi of x naught. So we get phi equals to 1 over the square root of pi times x a naught over 1 minus x a naught times exponential negative phi square. 1 plus error function of phi. Okay. And if we rearrange this, we can get x a naught, which is changing of time, equals to 1 over 1 plus pi times 1 plus error function of pi or phi times phi exponential phi square so negative one yeah so this is quite complicated if you look at the, the, the you know equation so let's try to put down some numbers here uh, to see what we get so if we tabulate the numbers, so x, a naught, and phi, and we define another called psi, which equals to phi times square of pi over x, a naught. 
and let's write these numbers down. 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. We get 0, 0 0.156, 0 0.3578, 0 0.6618, and it should be infinite here. And here we have uh, 1, 1 1.108, 1.268, 1.564, and infinite. Okay. So let's take a look at the rate, the rate of production of vapor. We have dNA dt equals to NAZ at z equals zero times s over c, so that equals to s times phi times dAB over t. So we get velocity of A now equals to S times psi times 4 dABT. Let's compare that to fixed second law. So meaning that we are omitting the second term on the left hand side. So VA by fix equals to s x a times 4 d a b t over pi and we can also rewrite this term this also equals to uh, s x a times 4 d a b t over pi times a correction factor psi. So this is where psi comes to play. So psi equals to phi square root pi over x a naught. So here's the importance, right? Here's the importance that we want to, you know, show. So if you are um, at a very low concentration at the interface, starting with zero, then the flux you get uh, from fixed second law has no difference if you don't consider the convective transport. But if you are at a higher and higher uh, molar fraction at the interface, you can see how the correction factor ex you know, increases, right? So this really shows This really shows the importance of, you know, considering, or let's say including, convective transport. Okay, so uh, sorry that we came a long way in trying to, you know, try not to um, overwhelm you with the math here. The math here is not really that difficult. You can certainly figure this out. So let's kind of go through the problem again, okay? So the problem is that uh, we have this system that we try to evaporate. Uh, it's evaporating a liquid A into a gas of B. In this case, we're looking at the non-steady state problem. So we say that Okay, at time, e let's say before t equals zero, we have, you know, a, a cover on this interface. So it prevents any air from evaporating, but at t equals zero, this would be removed, removed at t equals to zero. And the question would be, 
how does the you know the concentration of vapor a changes with time and position okay so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use the equation of continuity to figure out the total molar velocity and in this case because we already assume that b is not soluble in a and also a and b forms ideal gas mixture that gives us the, uh, the 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 space to say that you know density would be constant so the left hand side of the continuity equation of continuity becomes zero you have only the left hand side left so you can integrate this partial differential equation to get to the conclusion that the molar velocity would be a function of time okay and uh, using the relation between average molar velocity to the fluxes we get to our conclusion that uh, vz star would be related to uh, the mass transport or the, the total flux of naz not just the diffusion of flux okay so we're going to use this result into the equation of continuity of A, and that makes the left-hand side, the substantial derivative here, needs to be including that convective transport, which is the second term on the left. Okay, and so the next, the rest would be just trying to solve that. And to solve this problem, when, whenever we see a semi-infinite boundary problem or an infinite boundary problem we would approach it by the combination of variables and here by you know trying different combinations we figured that if you set your capital z equals to z over the square root of 4 dt and also defining the dimensionless concentration or mass fraction here then we get to a very clean ordinary second order ordinary differential equation here and also the boundary condition initially we have both boundary and initial condition now it becomes just boundary conditions so you're transforming an initial value problem to a boundary value problem and the rest is just solving this by not so complicated math except that your solution would be in the form of error functions like this okay and that's not all that difficult um, you know just go back and look at definition of error functions and so you get to uh, the expression for the mass fraction of a at the interface as a function of time okay and so we tabulated these values and the importance is on this correction factor psi when you compare uh, the results when uh, convection is considered versus pure diffusion by fixed first law you can see that the deviation between the two becomes greater and greater as the interfacial mass fraction increases okay Uh, so this again is really a good example showing the importance of including the convective transfer in your analysis because a huge error may arise if you don't. Okay, so that kind of ends our first example and it's actually our only example looking at uh, unsteady state transport problems. Um, in our next lecture, we will be going into boundary layer theories and boundary, uh, sorry, yeah, boundary layer theories and boundary layer problems.